Wilson Morales talking to Romeo Miller regarding his new film, Wrath, A Seven Deadly Sins story, which will play on Lifetime. How's it going? Blessed to see another day. No complaints. <laughs> so, you know, you always a jack of all trades. You do a lot of different projects, whether it's a film, TV show, you know, outside project, outside of stuff. You know, what went into saying yes to taking on this project? Yeah. Um, first off, anything that Bishop T.D. Jakes is a part of, you know, you can't really say no. That's somebody he's very aware of his purpose. Um, I worked with him on Jumping the Broom. And I know that when I work with him, it's going to be an entertaining project, but also it's going to have a deep message. So uh, off top, you know, knowing Bishop was a part of this, um, one of the other producers from my hometown, New Orleans, we're all like family. Shout out to Derek. And you know, hear Michelle Williams, the leading lady, like who going to say no to Michelle Williams? But it was one of those movies where, truthfully, um, I felt that I had to be a part of it because I had family members going through the same thing. And I felt a lot of men and women need that kind of guideline of how to handle a relationship that's that you're afraid to get out of or how to handle jealousy when it's that extreme. And I think this movie, Raph, is gonna be able to um, help a lot of the young people, just people in general, how to, um, to notice those red flags. I like to think that when anybody takes on the role, there's a little bit of themselves and the character that they're playing. You know, you're playing the best, uh, a friend of one of, of Michelle's character, who, you know, apparently, you know, the, your characters go way back. How do you relate to the character you're playing? Yeah, um, I relate to this character, Roger. He's that protector. You know, me being the oldest of the Brady Bunch Miller family, you know, I got eight brothers and sisters. I'm literally the protector. I know people see me from Lil Romeo and my, my career, but if you dive deep in with me, I'm that third, you know, I'm as well and making sure they're okay. And that's how I was able to relate with this Roger character. He's just that guy. He want to make sure that uh, the people he love is always safe. And uh, no matter what the situation is, he's going to be there. And I think they have a lot of Rogers out there that get overlooked. You know, you ever heard that saying, the good guys finish last? You know, um, I think that was true until you meet Rogers. So we'll see. <laughs> now, your character is a karate expert of sorts. You know, how are you? That, yeah. Are you a black belt? Are you a green belt? Or is it just a costume for show? <laughs> I'm just saying, man, when you watch the movie, you're going to see for yourself. I really do this. But um, <laughs> honestly, uh, growing up, uh, I did a lot of martial arts. You know, I did a lot of kickboxing, uh, been boxing over 15 years. So I'm not no black belt, but you know, I'm up there. We only had maybe one day to actually rehearse these stunts. And for me, even the stunt coordinator was like, seem like you've been doing this before. I didn't tell him I was doing this as a kid and a teenager, but um, it, all of that martial arts as a kid definitely paid off for this film. Hey, you're you're playing opposite Michelle Willis. We already know who she is. It's not the first yeah. time you've played somebody a little bit older than you. You know, so what is with that? You know, so like, hey, you know, oh, that's, I'm just calling that out there. I was like, oh, Romeo must be the good guy. You know, they don't. You know, they just want him to play that role. <laughs> Man, um, that's funny you said that. My last Bishop T.D. Jakes movie, I was the Cougar Hunter. Chasing the older <laughs> woman, jumping a broom. But um, no, uh, this film, I just think it was more just the every character made sense. Like it flowed perfectly from Michelle to Miss Tina to uh Antonio. The characters were just like it was like water. But um, now that you say that, yeah, I'm gonna have to look into this Hollywood thing. They may just be casting me a certain way. I'm gonna look into that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But how, you know, obviously, you know, we, you know, you, you, we got two musicians, you and Michelle, you know, yeah. so what was, had you met her before or was this the first time you were meeting her on this project? Yeah, honestly, you know, I grew up in Houston being from New Orleans. I'll be back and forth from Houston, Texas, Mo City, Sugar Land. So we'll always kind of, I'll cross paths uh, when she was uh, in Destiny Child back in the day, but we never really just had that uh, 
moment to connect and work with each other. And I just feel this was God's perfect timing of finally aligning that in this type of project. Like I said, that's it's more than entertainment. You know, this project, you're going to learn something. You're going to be able to use this to teach um, the youth how to deal with situations like this. So ironically, we never really crossed paths in depth until this movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over the years, you've dabbled in a lot of different projects. You know, what makes you say yes to them? Do you think about the project? Do you think, do you think about how long it's yeah. going to take to do it? Do you think about who's in it? What goes into, what are the ingredients that you look for? That's a great question. Um, first and foremost, for me, everything that I green light in my life, I got to feel God a part of it. If I don't feel God, um, I don't care how much money it is. I don't care how popular it's going to be. Um, I can't do it. Um, secondly, I got to know that what's the purpose behind the film? What's the purpose behind the project? Are we doing this with good intentions? Are we just doing something to create something to be the cool project? Um, thirdly, I'm not really big on knowing who else is a part of it. I'll read something first. And if my spirit is going that way, I feel um, everything lines up. But uh, just knowing like knowing Michelle was a part of this, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is going to be a dope film. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the producers, even our director, Troy, he worked on the Romeo show when I was a youngin. And uh, he was just like an AD on that set. So I just felt like this was God pushing me towards this project because I was actually uh, supposed to be filming another project. So I had to choose. And I chose this one and ended up in Canada the day. As soon as I signed, I had to fly to Canada, uh, go do my karate training and be ready on set, you know, uh, 24 hours right after signing. So I just felt like it was one of those projects that was meant to be. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's just whatever aligns with my spirit. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Where do we see you next then? Where do you see me next? I have uh, this project. It's called One Heart. I've been working on it for over seven years. And this is something I feel is going to be really uh, Oscar worthy. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but it's based off a true story. I had to study this kid for over two years who went to jail, wrongfully convicted, was a top football player. And uh, I got to just learn his story. And I'm excited for people to see this because it doesn't get realer than this movie. You'll, I guarantee, I don't care how strong and tough you are, when you watch this movie, at some point you will break down. And so I'm excited for One Heart to Come. That should be probably the end of this year. Um, this movie, April 16 on Lifetime, Raph, I'm excited for people to see this because the performances in there, it feels like you're watching a reality show in a sense where it's not like you're watching a movie, but you're watching somebody's life unravel in front of you. Um, me and my pops, you know, we have our, our uh, chip company. We got the rap snacks. We got the soldier snacks. Uh, those proceeds go back to our vets over there who's been fighting for us and the ones who lost their lives. So it goes to their families and uh, the Manyati shoes. And then I have my movie I'm producing in. I'm, I wrote the script. I'm starring in it. It's called Monster. It's kind of a Scarface meets Creed. I'm excited about that. And I'm in the works of a cool new TV show, kind of like a bachelor helping people find real love, not, not for entertainment. We're not putting people on TV to just go act the fool, but we really want to help people find their person or learn how to find their person. So uh, I can't talk too much on that, but that'll be coming as well. Now, it's always good to keep things quiet until things are ready to be done and ready to go into production. Yeah. Um, you know, you've done a lot in your career. I know sports is, you know, the, we got the playoffs coming up. Who are you looking forward to, oh, yeah. to take it all the way? Man, who am I looking for? Um, first shout out to U of H in the college world. I love what they did. Um, Coach is so amazing over there where he lost a lot of his star players and was still able to get to the Sweet 16. My little brother, Mercy Miller, be at U of H 2024. So I always love uh, watching U of H. And shout out to Xavier, my brother, Hersey Miller, as uh, a freshman in college. He'll be over there playing with Coach Miller as well. But far as basketball, man, I'm a Lakers fan, ride or die. Sometimes, you know, you got to fall so you can bounce back 10 times stronger. So, uh, you know, 
I'll be uh, just chilling this year because I'm waiting for my Lakers to recoup and we're going to see what they do next year. But uh, outside of that, you know, the Bulls, you know, my boy DeMar DeRozan, I love uh, him getting a, a second win back, showing people uh, what he's capable, capable of in Chicago. And, you know, for this championship, I don't know. I think this is a great year. I want to see CP3 get a championship. I think he's one of the best and a genius in basketball. And I just want to see that man get a championship. I think that'll be the icing on top of the cake for Chris Paul career. Before I let you go, congratulations on the raft. I'm definitely going to be promoting it so people can check it out. Thank you. And I want to hear from you first right now before a decision is made. <laughs> who do you want to coach the Lakers? The Lakers? Oh, who do I want to coach the Lakers? That's easy. Mark Jackson. I feel Mark Jackson should be coaching any team in the NBA. Um, seeing what he did with the Golden State Warriors um, before that dynasty and just knowing the type of person he is. I think the Lakers more so need it's a morality thing. You know, they have pieces there, but you got to have the right leader. You know, just like in the Bible, they say you can't be led by sheep. You got to have a lion lead the other lions. So um, Mark Jackson, I think just overall is an amazing man, you know, an amazing person, a God fearing man. I think he's the perfect person to lead any team to to that destination of a championship. So Mark well, Jackson. Romeo, congratulations on this film. Keep doing your work. We're here to support. I'll be looking forward for your next projects. Let's yeah. talk down the road. Take care. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Blessings.